Early on, we learned that Midland was founded by Paul Squibb. There are always myths and legends about boarding school founders. When you come in as the new head of school, that history can inspire you or it can weigh you down. World War I, France, 1917. A company of American ambulance drivers were stationed at the village of Dun Yi. They were Harvard students who'd volunteered to aid the war effort. They bought their own uniforms and equipment and paid their own way to get to the theater of war. Among them, Paul Squibb. Neither he nor anyone else could have had an inkling of the influence he would have on so many lives for generations to come. Including mine. Here are Paul and Louise with the entire faculty and student body when the school first opened in 1932. They all lived in the main ranch house with no electricity, no refrigeration, cooking on an old wood burning stove. Boys studied by the light of kerosene lamps. Eventually, student cabins, faculty houses, and classrooms were built using redwood board and batten construction that somehow escaped condemnation by county building inspectors. Paul Squibb went to Kent School in Connecticut and taught there when he returned from World War I. The headmaster at Kent and its founder, the Episcopal priest, Father Frederick Sill, would emerge as Paul's mentor and patron. Squibb brought the Episcopalian tradition to Midland. I should say that the chapel, that 15 minutes or so, sometimes less than 15 minutes, of getting everybody together and singing a hymn, reading a passage from the Bible, preferably the New Testament, and saying a few prayers, for most boys represented a time to get away from the daily concerns of life and sail off to distant spheres, or perhaps, in many cases, just daydreaming. I think that very often the boys did as I used to do as a child. I could sit through quite a long passage of scripture without having the faintest idea of what was being read. I was daydreaming and perhaps venturing into regions that I otherwise would never bother to venture into. Let's take a moment in honor of the values and rules and opportunities that Midland provides. Thank you to the opportunities that Midland provides. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Paul Squibb, as everybody will repeat, was a man of principle. You got a lot of respect for a person like that. We were uh, in awe of him, which is a little different than being afraid of him. Uh, he uh, was constantly uh, a surprise. You would think that uh, you were doing something that uh, you would be in real trouble, and uh, he'd sort of look at you and say, okay, go ahead and do it. Uh, a beautiful example of that was uh, uh, the fact that Midland uh, had a lot of rocks in the soil and was fun to throw rocks. And uh, every so often we'd get a little over enthusiastic throwing rocks at birds or at each other and uh, we'd break a window or so. Paul Squibb uh, uh, got a hold of a couple of people who had some laps to work off, and he said, get a wheelbarrow. And they got the wheelbarrow, and he said, fill it full of stones, the type you throw. And then he put a garbage can top on the fence. He said, all right, everybody going from the upper yard to the lower yard, from the lower yard to the upper yard, must throw a rock at the garbage can top or you get a one-lap penalty. And he okay. stuck to it. If you forgot about it, you got a one-lap penalty. 